Systemic failures within BP's management led to the oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico, a spill that could be repeated if greater regulation isn't enforced. That's according to a scathing US report. But was this really the worst environmental disaster America has ever faced? Or was it overhyped at BP's expense? And can the company ever recover? This is Inside Story. Hello and welcome to the programme. I'm Sue Turton. The companies involved in the BP oil spill chose money over safety. This according to a White House report investigating BP's oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. The report says last year's disaster was a result of cost-cutting measures by BP, Halliburton, Transocean and government offices dealing with the oil well. It also concluded that the incident was completely avoidable. John Terrett has more on this report that could lead to more trouble for BP and its partners. 11 men died the night the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded in the Gulf of Mexico. The blowout at the Macondo site led to one of the worst environmental disasters in US history. Millions of litres of crude oil escaped into the blue waters of the Gulf, polluting hundreds of kilometres of coastline in all five US Gulf states and wrecking the lives and businesses of countless Americans just as the usually lucrative summer season was about to get underway. The National Commission on the BP Deepwater Horizon oil spill and offshore drilling says purposeful or not, many of the decisions taken by all three companies involved, BP, Halliburton and Transocean, saved the firm significant amounts of money and it could happen again. Success really breeds complacency and uh, Transocean obviously had a long safety record on this particular rig. Uh, BP had a, a history of corner cutting uh, focusing on profits and when you have success coupled with uh, getting away with cutting corners that oftentimes leads to catastrophe just like we saw in this particular instance. The Commission's report goes on failures to appreciate risk compromised safety until the blowout was inevitable and at the very end uncontrollable. It says BP did not have adequate controls in place to ensure the key decisions in the months leading up to the blowout were safe or sound from an engineering perspective and says BP's major mistake was not ensuring the safety of the cement seal in the borehole. This additional finding, I mean, it demonstrates how we have come to this problem and how we need to address it in the future. And we're happy to see that this commission has shown that the, the industries are going to be held accountable for the disaster that happened on April 20th. The report's co-chairman, former Florida Governor Bob Graham, says the findings show the blowout was preventable and that the disaster likely would not have happened had the companies involved been guided by an unrelenting commitment to safety first. BP has said in a statement that the report, like its own investigation, had found the accident was the result of multiple causes involving multiple companies. Transocean said the procedures conducted in the final hours before the explosion were crafted and directed by BP engineers and approved by federal regulators. Though it lacked subpoena power, the Commission looked at thousands of pages of documents and interviewed hundreds of witnesses. Final publication carries no legal authority in the United States or anywhere else in the world. But anyone trying to sue any of the companies involved may be in a stronger position now than before the Deepwater Horizon Commission report was made public. John Terrett, Al Jazeera, Washington. Well, joining our discussion are our guests in Kuwait City, Turkey Hemsh El Takawi. He's an expert on offshore drilling. And in London, Chris Calland, a senior accountant manager at PLLMR. That's Political Lobbying and Media Relations. Um, Mr. Al Takawi, if I can start with you, the chair of the of the commission who wrote this report did attack BP for not having the, the necessary uh, commitment to safety, but it also attacked the regulators, uh, saying that they did not impose world class safety standards. How much should they be carrying the blame for what happened here? Well, actually, let me say that blowouts do not come out of the blue. Uh, there are usually a series of missteps, uh, chain reaction if you like. 
BP is the operator of the field, and we understand that. But BP, BP is not working alone. There are uh, different, uh, different firms and other companies that uh, are doing the cementing job. So far, from the statements we have uh, or have been revealed uh, to the media so far, we understand that there are few, uh, m many steps that was misleading uh, the engineers or the staff and resulted this disaster. The first of all is the cementing uh, job that failed. Then I'm, already, I'm almost quoting from BP report, the well integrity did not establish and so on. But nobody said that why the cement uh, job uh, failed. Some of them refer to the uh, unnecessary removing of the mud from the well. But in fact, the, uh, every question of, this, of these questions here uh, brings out more cues and cues, and big ones, uh, in fact. But an Removing awful lot the was done the into the, the post-mortem of after the actual disaster happened. What, what I just wanted to look at is some documents have come out that said that this particular well wasn't inspected since the year 2000. So surely people should be looking at the regulators to say, why weren't you checking these over the last 10 years? I don't know about the uh, regulation issues uh, in the United States, but I'm talking from the technical point of view. If, the, if there is something wrong with the cement job, the slurry would, wouldn't bond, and such a blowout could be uh, expected. So we need actually to, to point the right finger at the right person. We need a full detailed report uh, about the, the technical issue that happens, uh, happened on, on the rig. So far, all we have is some uh, brief details only, and nobody can, can judge uh, or say uh, who exactly is to be blamed. Uh, BB, from its side, admits that it holds a big share of the responsibility, especially because they are the operator uh, of, of the field. But Holly Burton, as well, has participated in that job. Uh, Transocean, uh, as well, is, a, is, is part of it. So I think that the big question currently is not who to be blamed, but why to blame uh, someone. How does What's the industry the see this? Happened? How does the industry see this um, this actual incident now in terms of how catastrophic it was? Uh, President Obama at the time did say it was the worst, worst environmental uh, disaster America had ever faced. Since then, an awful lot of scientists have come out and said that they don't actually think that it was as bad as originally thought, and a lot of the oil did dissipate. How does the industry see it? Is it one of the worst? I think there are two sides uh, of the story. The, 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 the bad side of the environmental side, actually, it is a tragedy uh, in, on all the aspects. But as you know, Mother Nature heals itself. And this is what happened when you look at the pictures uh, currently taken from uh, the Gulf of Mexico. You see that everything is getting much better than uh, April 2010, in the 20th of April. But there is a bright side. Nobody uh, mentioned it, actually. And maybe I sometimes become uh, optimistic because of, I'm a geologist, basically. Getting a well to produce, like the media said, 50,000 barrels a day is not, is not uh, something easy. When you have this a huge amount of oil uh, gushing to the surface from a few thousand meters below the sea, uh, the sea surface, it means you have a very good reservoir and very good quality of the rocks down there. So from this point of view, BP has, uh, has found uh, a, a big find, a, a big oil field. So this is how we look at the are two sides of the story. The bad side, and they are dealing with it. And I think British Petroleum has responded uh, relatively well to the gushing oil uh, issue. But there we are still looking at what's going to happen with the field. Because uh, when you are talking about uh, Gulf of Mexico, it provides about 8% of the oil of the United States. That's about 1.5 uh, million barrels a day. If I could turn to... And getting 50,000, sorry? If, if I could turn to, to Chris Callan in London on that point, you, okay. you were saying that uh, BP responded very well. I mean, I don't think anybody can forget Chris Callan when Tony Hayward came out, the CEO of BP, and said what he said shortly after the spill. There's no one who wants this thing over more than I do. You know, I'd like my life back. Chris Calland, you're an expert in crisis management when it comes to publicity and the resurrection, if you like, of, of companies' images. 
Could there have been any more gaffes uh, that they could have shot themselves in the foot with following what happened in uh, April and 20th uh, last year? Um, how much damage did what the various members of uh, the BP executive uh, did in, the, in those hours and days, how much did it do to the company's image? Well, it did a tremendous amount of damage. I mean, BP used to be one of the 100 top brands in the world, and it was in that position for 11 years. Uh, it lost that ranking after this disaster, and it really was the handling of the story and the mishandling of it by BP executives which set the tone for all the coverage which followed, which was, as you say, incredibly negative and incredibly damaging. Where's the British element to this? Um, OK, BP, it may be called British Petroleum, it is a, an international uh, global concern, but in the American public's mind, at least, it has the word British in it. Was there, was there a little bit of, of play going on, especially uh, with regards to the, the US president, uh, playing on the fact this was British Petroleum uh, and using that in some way? Oh, th there undoubtedly was politics at play here. Um, if you think back to Hurricane Katrina and how the Bush administration was severely criticised for its handling of that, uh, the Obama White House wanted to avoid that at all costs and so uh, very cleverly went on the offensive right from the outset in putting the focus of everything that had happened firmly on BP and as you say using the, the phrase British Petroleum, the name British Petroleum rather than BP. Uh, but I'd, I'd come back to what I said at the outset about BP's handling of it. They unfortunately didn't do themselves any favours with the way that they responded to it and we heard from, from Tony Haywood there. Uh, he also said I, I remember that he wished he'd trained to be an actor rather than a scientist but unfortunately for the CEOs of major organizations, multinational companies like BP, they have to be an actor to some extent. They have to be able to be the public face of what is going on and be able to explain that clearly to people. BP have tried uh, over the years uh, to be, be seen as a green company. I, I know back as far as the year 2000 they were spending $200 million trying to appear to be green with the launch of, uh, of an extensive advertising campaign where uh, they talked about BP standing for Beyond Petroleum. I think we can look at one of those commercials now. Can solar power become mainstream? Could business go further and be a force for good? Can 100,000 people in 100 countries come together to build a new brand of progress for the world? We think so. And today, BP, Amoco, Arco, and Castro get together to try. Beyond Petroleum, BP. I think we can safely say that their environmental credentials have been shot to pieces uh, in the last few months. But So they come to you now with a, a pot full of money, a lot of money, I'm sure, uh, at the cost of your firm, and say, how do we get out of this mess? How do we resurrect our image? What do you advise them? Well, there's no silver bullet. There's no one thing that they can do that will magically repair all the damage that's been done. As you said, they spent a lot of money on a rebranding some years ago, and it's going to take a lot of money and a lot of time to put this right. And let's also remember, going right back to the, to, the, to the actual event itself, you know, people died in this event, and it was a huge ecological disaster. It's still affecting thousands of people along the Gulf Coast. So BP is going to have to focus on the cleanup operation. It's going to have to continue to communicate with all the people who are affected by this, its employees, the regulators, the politicians, the people living along the Gulf Coast. It'll take an awful lot of time, an awful lot of money, and it's a long haul, really. Talking of money, they have put together a, a huge pot for compensation claims, much, much more than they were required uh, by law. Uh, that's obviously going to be seen as a, a positive thing, or possibly would some people say they're trying to buy themselves out of this situation? That's precisely why the, the constant communication, the co constant flow of information to people is so important. Because as you say, if they simply produce this big pot of money and say, well, there you go, have this, that doesn't necessarily uh, allay people's concerns. It doesn't necessarily reassure people that BP is serious about listening to them. So they have to talk to people, they have to listen to people, and they're going to continue to have to do that. Uh, well, just like any major organization will have to do constantly.
would some sort of grand gesture work? I'm thinking of a marine park or sponsored by PP or, or something that actually shows that how positive they want to make their image now with doing something very green. It might well be that they are able to do something that has some sort of real meaning and provides a lasting legacy. Um, but again, I would, I would go back to this point about it's about talking to people, listening to people, about a flow of information. So any sort of grand gesture, well, if, if that's what people think would make a real difference, then OK, that might be a good thing to do. But if it's done just for the sake of it or just to look good, well, that's when it could look just like an, an empty gesture. Mr. Altakawi, if I can turn to you, how much damage do you think within the industry uh, this uh, disaster has done to BP's image? Uh, the, one of the things I'm thinking of is only this week the share price did bounce back again uh, through um, various information that possibly Dutch Shell was looking at a possible takeover bid. Can it recover? Can BP recover? OK, the image is, is, is dented, but as, a, as far as a going concern is concerned, would you say it can recover? Well, as you know, British Petroleum is one of what I call, or many people call, uh, the five big petroleum sisters. And it's, it's a, an ancient company, it's not a new company in this field. And it produces a, a large share of the oil daily, daily oil rate. I'm, well, we are all aware that it's, uh, price, uh, the stock prices uh, are gained uh, again almost to their previous uh, levels. And British Petroleum is not working only in the Gulf of Mexico. It has almost uh, projects uh, all over the world, especially in the Middle East. And British Petroleum was one of the early companies that, were, that worked in, in, in the Middle East. They are working in, in deep drilling currently, in offshore deep drilling in many Arab countries. So in this area of the world, the image of British Petroleum was not affected by, by, that, uh, by, by that incident. And I'm relatively sure it is going to take time. This compensation issue uh, is being worked on, and the market needs every drop of oil currently due to the speculations about the supply uh, and demand. So I don't think, and even the United States cannot jeopardize uh, stopping drilling uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. Regulations may, be, may become harder. Taxes could be dealt with again, but we are talking about over 4.4 billion barrels of oil reserved in that uh, part of the world and produces over 1.6 million barrels a day currently and over uh, something like 12.7 trillion cubic feet of gas. This, uh, this is a big treasure. I don't think the uh, U.S. can uh, afford to neglect them. Uh, so also will, the will, will not... Sorry to interrupt. Sorry. Also You're within saying. the report, it talked about systemic management failures uh, within BP and referred to how a disaster like this could reoccur, could happen again. Uh, are you confident the, that is not the feeling within the industry, that, that enough is being done to stop this being able to happen again? As I said before, uh, these blowouts do not happen just like this. There are, there is, uh, you know, you know the, the domino stones. I think that they call them. When one of them fail, the others start to fail with it. So there was so something wrong happened on that well. Nobody knows so far what exactly ha had uh, has happened wrong. They all blame it to the cement job, but nobody said why the cement job was was wrong. Why it did not uh, contain the hydrocarbons. They said there was unnecessary removal of that uh, mud from the well. But, they, but sometimes this uh, mud in the well is not only pure water and clay. There are chemical additives that they, they, maybe the engineers thought these additives could uh, prevent the cement from bonding uh, tight behind the casing. So as I said, there are many cues here. We, we need to understand what, what happened exactly to prevent it from happening in the future. Uh, and because there was a blowout uh, with, with BP in this area of, of the world, it doesn't mean at all that is going to happen again in other parts of the world. Although we cannot neglect exactly that the blowouts can happen at any time, anywhere, if there was something wrong. But we need to know exactly what is this wrong, what, what wrong has happened. There is a, a margin of risk we are working with when we are talking about the petroleum industry. 
certainly and we have um, to live uh, to live up with that certainly in, in the states there has been uh, some slowing down of the granting of licenses for exploration uh, i know president obama made made a big thing of this do you think there has been an impact in other places around the world or has this slowing down really only been in the states not as, uh, as far as i'm concerned no in the, in the uh, in the middle east i'm talking uh, basically on the middle east it's not affected actually the only thing is that there are some projects was uh, delayed by B by bp in uh, in this area of the world or, uh, it, or as well withdrawed from some projects like in Oman for instance but it was because they tried to focus all their efforts on solving this uh, Gulf of Mexico issue but I don't think it's going to affect them more than that. Chris Callan just moving back to you again one of the things that uh, will stay in people's minds is the is the fishermen the lobster fishermen talking about how their catches are now dramatically reduced how they many of their boats are now uh, sitting on the hard not going out to sea because of what's happened there that is something again that is going to have to be worked through with BP as to how they get past that not just compensation wise but but doing so much damage to industry in that part of the world absolutely absolutely and again it's this point about engaging with people talking to people finding out what it is that they need in order to to get them out of this situation that they're in and BP is going to have to do that across the world actually I mean there's a report out by a British parliamentary committee today which says that they have serious concerns about whether a BP type oil disaster might happen in the North Sea and how Britain would be able to cope with that. So you need to be talking to as many people as possible who are affected by your operations. You need to be finding out what is the situation that they find themselves in and what can you be doing about it. And the long-term possible after effects of this disaster, people just don't know, do they? There's been a lot of talk about whether that there is a oil sitting on the, on the seabed and it may affect future catches. Um, is that something else that BP should really be making a big thing of, that they're going to be doing research way into the future as to whether there is long-term effects in this area? Well, this is a key point because the report says that this type of disaster could happen again. So you can have as much PR as you want, but at the end of the day, what you need to be doing is investing in the technology, the research, the safety, to make sure that you're doing everything humanly possible so that it doesn't happen again. That in time will provide that reassurance to people that it is a respected and trustworthy brand. People can put their faith in the brand and in the organization. Uh, but that, again, is a lot of hard work and it is definitely for the long haul. Should they change their name? Should they call themselves something else? Well, as you said at the outset, they spent a lot of money on rebranding several years ago as, as Beyond Petroleum, and they have the Sunflower logo. The danger with any knee-jerk rebrand is it looks like you're just trying to uh, sweep, sweep things under the carpet. I think if I was advising BP, I would be saying to them that continue with the cleanup operation, focus on communicating with people on a two-way flow of information, talk to everyone that you need to, and it's through that, and it's through that sustained effort and focus on safety and on improving things, that will be the, the thing that actually uh, produces some real benefits at the end of the day, not necessarily a knee-jerk cosmetic change. That question to do, Mr. al Takawi. Would you suggest British Petroleum should change their name so they can start afresh? Well, just let me say that if anybody can name um, any company or any firm that uh, doesn't focus on profit without, of course, compromising their safety uh, issues. Car accident could have been avoidable too, but they happen every day. And let me say that the claims that British Petroleum received uh, for the compensation, thousands of them were false and they had no basis at, at all. British Petroleum has been known for being almost a green firm for a long, for a long time. I agree with my colleague that they need to focus more on uh, research and uh, get to the point of it, why did it, the, why did it happen, and just to try to make sure it will not happen again for that particular reason, because blowout will happen again and again for, for, 
another unpredictable reasons. Mr. Turkey Hemshal Takawi in Q8 and Chris Callan in London, thank you very much. And thank you so much for joining us here on this edition of Inside Story. We welcome your comments and suggestions. Please email them to us at insidestory at aljazeera.net. Goodbye for now.